What's up everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about three stocks that I'm looking to swing trade here towards the end of July, heading into the month of August in 2019. And during my analysis this morning, I figured why not just make a video, talk about what's going through my mind right now, what are my thoughts on the market, some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching, and that's what you're watching right now, guys. I'm making the video because I want to let you guys into my mind mind a bit further here with some live analysis, um, you know, just looking at some live charts and what I'm personally thinking. So if you enjoy this type of video, if you enjoy this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done so already, I'm posting multiple videos per week, daily videos about the stock market, my trades, my personal philosophy, stuff like that. So feel free to subscribe to the channel and let's get the party started. So right now, the s and up 0.3% with about 20 minutes left, or rather 20 minutes into the market. We're up about $9, and if we go to the one day, one minute, this is a support resistance level that I'm watching right now. On the one day, one minute, 29.75, and actually if we go back to the 184 hour chart, you'll see this better, 29.75 is a critical support right now that I'm watching, right? This is an old resistance, we broke out of it, it's a new support. We retested it earlier in July. July, we popped above it, solidifying it as a support, and that level is also right on top of the 50 SMA here on the 184 hour chart, which is another support. So right now, if the markets get rejected under this 180 SMA, which we were rejected at that on Friday session, if we get rejected here after this little rally that we're seeing, this could be a good entry point if we do continue the downtrend for one of these market ETFs like SPXS, as well as as SQQQ, but that's actually trading on the NASDAQ. So actually disregard that statement, just the SPXS, um, you know, for the S&P 500, right? If we were to get rejected there. And I'm also thinking on these longer time frame charts, notice how, although there's a bunch of jazz and nonsense here, let me just clear this very quickly. Notice how if the S&P were to get rejected at this level that I just talked about on the smaller time frames, on the larger time frames here on the 10 day 30, that would be uh, us getting rejected under the 50 SMA for a lower high from the previous. And if, especially if we broke 29.75, that would be a lower low. And at that point, the downtrend is still intact. So I'm watching this spot as being extremely critical right now. If we were to break out at that point and we held above 3,000, you know, we could be pushing for an all time high again at that point because that's really the break of this downtrend that we've been on over the past couple of days, but we just need to get rejected and break below 29.75, in my opinion, to continue this downtrend here. So that's a little brief rundown on what I'm looking at at the markets right now, in the markets, in specific the S&P, which is what I use to track, you know, the entire market. It only makes sense because, it, you know, the S&P is the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. So I want to do my analysis based on the top 500 companies in the country, right? That only makes sense. So let's hop into three stocks that I do have written out right here on my piece of paper that I'm looking to swing trade. Then we'll jump into some other analysis very quickly, very, very quickly, rapid fire style with some other stocks and DTF. So INTC, guys, this is one that if you recall a couple of weeks ago, I actually traded this one and I took Took a bit of a loss on it, right? I traded it. I got in. I forget exactly when I got in, but it was during this point in time. I got in on a dip. It might have been this day. We got rejected. We broke the 50 SMA, something like that, and then I ended up cutting losses there. But anyway, since that point in time, we've actually recovered quite nicely, and this actually proved to be on the longer term scale. If we're taking a look at a couple weeks back, this ended up proving to be a higher low. So honestly, guys, I sold a bit too early back then, but that's okay, right? Because hindsight's 2020. I didn't know it was going to bounce. And at that point in time, that was a smart move. So I'm very happy with myself for sticking to my rules. But if I were to hold, right, if I knew the future, if I had the crystal ball, right, you know, I'd be up quite a bit on my position right now. But that obviously didn't happen, and now I'm going to analyze it with the new data that we have since I made my last trade. And at this, and at, and at this point, guys, you can see that that was merely a dip. 
we popped up, we held the 50 SMA, we pulled back again, actually, and we retested it back in the middle of this month. That was actually about five days to a week ago this happened. And since then, we broke out of this critical resistance at $50. As you guys can see, that was a resistance months back towards the beginning of this year and towards the end of 2018. We broke that level, which is very critical. And now I'm looking to see... Are we going to hold this level as a new support? Are we going to pull back and hold... $49.75 and $50 as a new support. And if we do do that, guys, I think we'll be able to potentially fill the gap back up to $51.80, $52. That's what I'm watching right now on INTC. And if I get my handy dandy tool out, you guys can see another level here that we might test today is at about $51. So I'm thinking if we pull back test 50, we start to pop up, you know, that could be a good entry point up to $51. And once we break $51, if we break that level, that could be a point to add more money in if we retest that and pop up the $51.65, which would be the exit point. So that's what I'm looking at. $50 up to around $52. I think this is a very possible scenario here on INTC, especially since it's been doing quite well. But one thing to keep an eye out for, guys, they are reporting earnings here in three days. So earnings, depending on if they miss on EPS, if they beat on EPS, if they miss on revenue, or if they beat on revenue and how the guidance is really earnings can push the stock up or down. So this could break the trend completely, but if it doesn't really react too crazily, we see that maybe the earnings were good, guidance was good, Maybe if we pull back, that could open up an ideal scenario um, to get into INTC. And me personally, I like to wait until after earnings reports to get into stocks. So at this point, I'm probably looking for this um, as an entry point for me personally. Again, you do your own research probably towards the end of this week on the 26th, which if I I'm, I'm assuming the 26th is Friday, right? 26th. Yeah, I'm thinking 26 is Friday. That can maybe be a day that I might look into entering INTC here after they report earnings. So another one that I'm looking at is DPZ Domino's Pizza. We talked about this one in yesterday's video, but if you weren't able to catch that, Domino's Pizza right now, you can see we took a massive dump from 280 down to 245. And the real reason, the first reason why I'm liking this one a lot right now, and give me a second, guys, my phone is uh, buzzing right now, but the real reason why I'm liking this one a lot right now is because we held this $245 level of support that's been a support over the past couple of uh, months, to be quite honest, right? You, you, We hit it here once, we hit it again, we hit it again, now we pulled back massively, we retested it after this earnings report, and now we've been recovering quite nicely from the pop on that support. And you guys can see it even better on the five-day, five-minute, right? We sold off, we started to uh, hit that support level, and then on the five-day, five-minute, we started to break out of the 180 SMA and the 50 SMA, which were at one point resistance levels, and now we're holding them as new support levels. The breakout, the pullback, the hold on the 180 SMA support, higher low from the previous, and from there, we've just been uptrending the past really uh, three trading days, and heading into today, you know, you guys can see we're holding that 180 SMA again. So, at this point in time, guys, I'm looking for this DPZ stock, Domino's Pizza, to hold this level we're at right now. I'm confident we will because... We are holding it as I'm as I'm speaking right now, and the RSI is really oversold. So for this trend to even continue, and there we go, guys. We got a nice little gap up candlestick. There it goes. You see, you see what I'm talking about, guys. We pulled back, we held it, and now we're starting to break. This is exactly what we want to see. So let's see if it starts to uh, continue the push there. But ideally, now that we saw the big pullback, a break above the 50 SMA and 255. Uh, 256 would be ideal in my opinion as well and if we're going back to the 20 day one hour you can see this is merely a pullback at a higher low so the uptrend is still intact 
90 day two hour i would actually like to see um you know a break into the 260s eventually and let's talk about that resistance right now guys you see this 255 level is a support and if we pop to the next resistance at 260 how much does that offer us if we want to swing trade that that's about a 1.64 percent profit margin right there and that honestly if we hold this and start to uptrend again that should fill in the matter of a couple of days in my opinion and that's if the uptrend stays on tat intact and you guys can see it is at this point right you're starting to see it even better now with some time we pulled back we popped and now we're bouncing and if we look on the one day one minute you guys can see it as well you can see the pullback and now we're starting to pop ideally a break above again 256 you can see that was a level of support um this past friday a ideally a break above that and the 50 SMA on the intraday chart as well. That would be pretty ideal for um, DPZ. So FedEx right now, guys, that's another one I talked about in yesterday's video, but I figured I'd cover it again today because I don't just talk about these stocks just to talk about them, right? I like following up on them. I like... Um, you know, just keeping track with them and updating you guys in the videos, right? That's kind of the point, because if I'm just talking about a stock and then I don't talk about it again, it's like, what's the follow-up, right? What ended up happening in terms of a uh, technical analysis? And that's why I'm following up right now, because uh, FDX is starting to show some signs that I am liking. So we talked about in yesterday's video, just to break it down very quickly, and obviously for all the new viewers out there, I'll talk about it in this video. But overall, FedEx, it's very clear that it's been down trending over the past six months and if we go to the one year one day chart it's pretty much been the past year at this point right ever since literally one year ago back in July August of 2018 you know we've dumped very aggressively since that point in time and going back to the 184 hour we're noticing now that we're breaking out of the 180 SMA which has been a resistance over the past couple of months and now we're starting to test the 170 level which was once a support and once we broke that support support back in June, May, June, you know, that became a resistance level, right? And that is the level we're testing right now. And this is actually a spot that we've test on three other occasions, once, twice, three times, where we've gotten rejected each and every time. So I'm thinking now, guys, if we break out here, that's going to be an extremely bullish move since, again, we've struggled four different times, three different times, rather. And from there, you know, we could potentially fill the gap up to 175 or rather $185 potentially here, which offers about a 7-8% margin of profit. So technically right now, guys, FDX is just, you know, it's just on the brink of breaking out right now. It's like right there. It is right there. And one sign that I'm seeing, you know, that I'm liking right now is the big gap up that we saw this morning. I'm really liking that. That's showing us a bit of, uh, you know, momentum shift to the upside here. We, um, you know, broke the 170 resistance momentarily. We failed to hold it, but now we're actually holding that 50 SMA support on the intraday chart. We're actually breaking a bit below it now. So ideally, I'd need to see a recovery up at some point today and maybe a close above 170 before even considering FDX. But I am I'm liking the movement that we are seeing and you guys can see we are slowly holding that so if we were to pop and you know start to trend up to 171 maybe pull back and close above 170 you know that would just be absolutely ideal in my opinion right now and FDX at that point I think it's going to break out. So I'm watching that FDX, DPZ, and INTC. Those are the three stocks that I'm personally watching right now to swing trade. And a bonus stock that it's not looking too good technically right now, um, you know, but it looks like it is starting to break out. This could be the first breakout sign for this stock. MO is the ticker, and the signal is that we broke above this 180 SMA. This is typically what I like to watch for, you know, for stocks that are downtrending, right, for them to reverse, to start to uptrend, you know, the first thing they have to do is break a moving average resistance, right, because typically when a stock is downtrending, the moving averages in this case, the green and the yellow line, they're acting as resistances, right? So the first sign of a break out of those resistance levels, you know, that opens my eyes and I'm like, okay, this could be the start of an uptrend, right? And we're seeing that on MO. We can see 
see if I can draw a channel on this for you guys very quickly. And this is a bonus stock, by the way. This is another one that I'm actually long on MO. Um, they pay a really nice dividend. They pay like a 6% dividend at this point. Um, I'm long on them, but I figured, you know... A swing trade on this would be a pretty cool, uh, a pretty interesting thing to break down. And uh, because I don't really look at stocks like MO, like some of these longer term um, stocks, I don't really trade them um, in my swing trading and day trading accounts. I usually just like to buy them in my dividends account. But anyway, you guys can see based on this channel, again, we've been downtrending, lower lows, lower highs, all of that jazz. And now we're breaking out of the channel. We're breaking out of the resistance and this 180. SMA. And this is mostly because Philip Morris, PMI, Philip Morris International, and for those of you guys who don't know, Altria is a tobacco company, and Philip Morris International is also a tobacco company, right? Uh, Altria does business in the United States, right? That's their focus for the Marlboro cigarette brand. And uh, Philip Morris International focuses on, you know, the rest of the, uh, uh, the global population, right? Wherever they end up selling. Um, but Philip Morris, you guys can see, these stocks are, they're kind of when one does well, the other one spikes up in, in a sense, right? And Philip Morris reported an earnings report um, a couple days ago, and the stock went up like 10% in the day, I believe. 8, 9, 10%, it's up from that point. And that obviously, because tobacco sales, cigarette sales, for those of you guys that don't know, they've been doing quite poorly over the past couple of years. And once, uh, you know, some good news comes out for one of these tobacco companies, since there's been a lot of just onslaught and negative news, once some news comes out that's good, right, that influences the stock, right? So MO, you guys can see, you know, just because PMI or just because Philip Morris got influenced a bit, you know, it did very well. It went up 8%. That influenced Altria, right? And you guys can see it on the five day, five minute. You know, this is, I think this is the day that Philip Morris reported, you know, from 49.50, we gapped up literally like three, four percent. And that's the move that broke us out of that channel. So I'm interested in seeing, you know, if we hold this and start to run up from here, this could be a point in time that could open up a quite nice entry point, a quite nicely, uh, Quite a nice entry point here for Altria, right? And if we're just drawing out some resistances, you guys can see, you know, if we fill the gap from 50 to 52 up to 55, that could end up offering, you know, 5, 10% of margin there. So that's one that I'm watching for sure. j and is dropping a lot right now. It's down another $2, 1.52% at the time that I'm recording this video. You guys can see it's a straight down trend, not looking like it's returning. And, you you know, those are just a couple that I'm watching, guys. You know, Netflix, 307.92, straight downtrend. It's still down about $80 since before the earnings report. Not looking like it's recovering at all right now. Amazon's another one that I'm watching, right? If we go to the 184 hour, it needs to hold this level, which it seems like it is above 1950 to 1960 as a support to fill the gap up to $2,000 before me even considering to trade it. You know, the, the gap fill could be a tradable event there if that does end up happening, but we need to break out of this 50 SMA on a 20 day, one hour chart first before we could end up, um, you know, trend trading it on based on the data on the longer term chart. So that's it for this video, guys. I don't want to have it be too, too long, but that's kind of my thoughts right now. That's things that I'm watching, stocks that I'm watching and points that I'm looking to enter on all of these different stocks. Amazon 1985 would be my entry point. That would be once we break that 50 SMA here on the 20 day one hour chart so if you enjoyed this video guys feel free to go down below hit that like button feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already drop a comment down below let me know what you are watching in terms of stocks ETFs what are your thoughts on the markets I would love to know and if you haven't done so already guys join our strive smart discord group chat join our strive smart Facebook group all of those links are linked down below I'll catch you all in the next video thanks again for taking the time to watch this it means a lot peace out what's up everybody is 